never good to come on after the applause. But <laughs> <laughs> so, so my my first question to you is, how do you respond to the new nickname, the Great? Um, like I haven't heard that nickname, but I thank you. Um, I usually get Ivan the Terrible. <laughs> How, how much cooperation did you have from the NFL in making this very fine film? Oh, thank you. Uh, we were very lucky. They liked the script. Uh, really, right from the beginning, uh, they responded. Uh, our work with them really had to do with accuracy and making sure that uh, we didn't push the envelope in any way. And we went through various departments at the NFL. And um, we're, I don't think the movie could have made uh, being made. It was. Uh, it was a really a factor even in the green light of the movie that they were going to be involved. And, you know, it took a lot of time because they have a lot of promotion partners. Um, they had to vet it for accuracy, as I was saying earlier. Um, you know, but they went with it and they were very, very helpful. They were. And you picked the teams, or they picked teams, like the Kansas we, City Chiefs? No, we picked the teams, um, but they were helpful in terms of. Each team had to agree themselves, and you know, s some teams came off better than others in the screenplay. And one of the things that the um, the teams had to realize is that it was a work of fiction. We weren't really uh, trying to reflect on how they drafted or anything else. Um, really, the important team was the Cleveland Browns, and the, as you may have heard, it was originally the Buffalo Bills when it was written. Uh, one of our screenwriters is from Cleveland, and he was afraid to write it about his home team. And the, um, both the Browns and the Bills, if you follow football at all, have had a relatively unfortunate history, uh, football history. And also they're kind of rust-built East Coast towns with great fans and with a, um, you know, with a kind of a, an industrial past that has seen greater glory at another time. And, and their sports team was very important to them. So each team, each city worked really well. Uh, what it turned out was a financial question. Uh, we scouted both places, both uh, met with both organizations, both of, us, both of them wanted us. And finally it was two or three million dollars um, less expensive to shoot in Ohio than in New York State. And uh, because of certain sort of state givebacks, and other kinds of um, union rules. So we just had to choose the less expensive one. What's your favorite team? My personal? Yeah, your it's personal actually team. Seattle. I, and I say that before they won. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because um, I actually know uh, John Nordstrom. I, I live in Montecito, California. And John Nordstrom of Nordstrom's uh, used to own, was one of the original owners, and he's a good friend of mine. And, you know, he indoctrinated me. Was there anything you wanted to do that the NFL was kind of iffy you on and told you not to do, or that you had to really go No, there was two or three bits of language uh, that uh, they said, you know, I, we'd appreciate it if you didn't use that word right over here. And, um, <laughs> uh, you know, we they understood that it had to be, you know, sometimes people speak in a relatively salty way, both in the... Um, both in the heat of negotiation and what goes on in, in locker rooms and things like that. So they weren't trying to whitewash it. They were just, uh, particularly when coaches were speaking to other coaches, that sort of thing, um, there was some concern. I, I'm trying to think, there was really nothing in the, in the storytelling uh, that happened. Your thoughts about Arian Foster. Uh, Sorry, I'll get right to you. Yeah. Yeah. Your thoughts about Arian Foster and the job he's doing, still being a playing NFL running back? Well, I can only, I'm not going to talk about him professionally as a football sure. player. I don't think that's my expertise. Uh, but I'll just say, um, I, we were looking for guys who look like football players to play the, um, you know, the recruits that, the potential recruits that were coming from college. And I received uh, on a stack of sort of tapes, there was, Arian Foster. I said, is this the Arian Foster? And, uh, and, you know, the casting director said, yeah, we'll take a look at it. And it was really good. And of course he looks right. And especially, you know, he normally plays with a beard on, but we shaved it all off. And he looks, he looks exactly like a college senior would look. And the ironic thing about Foster, when we were shooting at Radio City and we were on the red carpet and we were coming in and doing all this stuff, and we were, 
we were shooting during the actual draft, and um, the uh, with real people, everything else. And he turned to me and he said, "You know, I never, I, I never got to uh, do the draft. He, he was undrafted, and uh, he got picked up later on as being part of the sort of practice squad. He just fought his way on the team. Since, so, yeah. Since, since you're winning a, a chief, a long, long time achievement award, could you reflect on?" Well, things did change, you know, quite a bit from when I started. Um, I, my career really goes back a good 40 years plus. I just look really young. And uh, <laughs> uh, I was lucky. I, I got to direct movies in the sort of contemporary golden age of Hollywood, uh, which was probably the 80s and uh, where we were, were directors and creative people were well compensated and we were well compensated because really the home video market expanded the sort of income for the studio so they were being relatively generous um, and it was, seemed to be easier to get movies made. Um, and I was very lucky because I had this wonderful run at the beginning of my career really starting with an Animal House I had about 10 or 11 really big time hits in a row, and uh, so it was nice. <laughs> and, uh, yes. Ivan, this is for Robin Leach, Vegas Dawes. Congratulations yes. on your award. Thank you. Would you fill in Nevada as our film commission why this tax incentives for the studio? Um, yeah, certainly. I mean, Nevada is really uh, an extraordinary uh, state because of because of its topography is so interesting, frankly. And, and this town itself, Las Vegas, is just unlike anything else in the world. Um, my good friend Todd Phillips, uh, you know, did the three Hangover. I mean, at least started the Hangover movies here. We were going to produce the Hangover movie with him, and uh, because of the technicality of the studio, we were not able to uh, to do it. It was unfortunate because it was such a big hit. But um, I thought, I thought. Um, I could see from him and speaking to him that the city was very, very generous in terms of accessibility and along, and I think it really made a big difference in that film. You really felt real. You're so busy as a producer now. What does it take to get you to direct something? I actually want to direct more. I don't know if it's about getting older or watching my son do so well. <laughs> the, um, um, it's way more fun to direct, and um, I, uh, you may have read that I decided to forego directing uh, Ghostbusters 3, which we all hope to get made, and I will produce it. I just, that was too hard, and really coming off of, it was, it was Harold's death, Bill Murray's sort of reluctance to be part of it, uh, the sense that, well, I had done two of them already that I was quite proud of, and I was really playing with fire to actually try directing a third one, and it was a combination of all those things, and I had just come back from Harold's funeral and I, I met with the studio and I said, you know, I'd really like to direct it, uh, produce this. I, I think we could find a really good director to do this. And the most important thing was coming off of draft day, however it may end up doing when it opens three weeks from now. I was really proud of it. I loved uh, doing something that was more dramatic, that was really uh, more performance-based and, and smaller. And I thought, well, that would be a better thing for me to do with my time at this point in my career. We just All right, one more, guys, Spike. one more. We just heard from the Sprite Film Students Project, guys. Uh, several of them mentioned that you were the mentor in the best part of the week for them. Oh, that's nice. What do you feel you helped pass along to them? I just try to be realistic with them and really try to inspire them, not only to work hard, but to be aggressive with their lives and, and to do things that were not ordinary. Uh, that if, for them to pay attention to their stories and that if they felt that they'd seen sequences in their story or their entire story before, that might be a good idea for them to sort of look harder and try harder and do something original, find their voices. After everything, after everything you've done, are there any novels left for you to find that you feel like, or is genre you want to tackle? Um, I, I feel really hungry. Uh, I just want to do good work and, and try to find great stories that I can, that I can tell. So 
I, I, I'm not bored. Tell you that. All right, guys. <laughs> this lady just oh, let me try to ask a question for ten minutes. I, I forgive me for being personal, but I went to college with Harold, and I acted with him, and I've been following his career, and I know the people that now have us, but I'm wondering if you could say a word about what he meant, because he was such an extraordinary talent and a great writer. Well, he had an extraordinary influence on my career. Harold. Harold, Harold Ramis, you know. Um, Harold and I uh, worked on five movies together and a stage show. Uh, I met Harold in a show called The National Lampoon Show, which I produced off Broadway. And this is before Saturday Night Live, before Second City. It brought Harold Ramis, Bill Murray, Gilda Radner, John Belushi, Brian Bill Murray, Joe Flaherty together ever. And uh, they were this extraordinary group, and he was as an actor as strong as any of them. Um, and most of all, he was this wonderful leader and a writer. And he helped me, well certainly we worked on Animal House, then Meatballs, Stripes, the two Ghostbusters movies. And, and he wanted to direct himself, and I encouraged him to go forward and direct, and I thought he would do a good job. And he certainly did with um, a whole bunch of films, the, the best of which I thought was Groundhog Day. Um, it was a shock. We were working together on the third Ghostbusters starting about four years ago and he got really sick. And I thought he was just going to get better after a month and he just um, didn't. And um, I was really going to visit him just two months ago and his wife called me up and said, you know, I don't think you should come right now. And that's when I learned that things really took a turn for the worse. Anyway, I miss him. Lovely to talk to all of you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.